Hi, I'm Carrie Williams with Dine Newport Beach. We're here in the beautiful Crystal Cove Shopping Center where I love to hang out and shop and also eat. In fact, today we're going to be trying some of the best sushi in town at Bluefin. Dine Newport Beach is a show for people who love food like I do. I'm a native of Newport. I love the foodie haunts, the high-end restaurants, you name it, I know it, and I'm gonna take you there. I'm Carrie Williams, and let's explore dining in Newport Beach together. Bluefin at Crystal Cove Shopping Center in Newport Beach is a uniquely innovative Japanese restaurant with stunning ocean views and a sophisticated intimate interior with a deep ocean blue waterfall backdrop, dramatic illuminated sushi bar, dark woods and contemporary Italian chairs. Bluefin is an experience of both art in sushi and art in dining. We were met by Bluefin co-owner, Ted Lee. Well, now we're inside Bluefin, which is one of the prettiest restaurants in Newport Beach. It's got an amazing ocean view. And I'm here with owner Ted Lee yeah. uh, of Bluefin. And I wore special for today, my little ode to Bluefin. It's one of my favorite necklaces, but now I'll always think of Bluefin when I wear it, which is a good thing. Tell us a little bit about how Bluefin started and how long you've been here at the Crystal Cove Shopping Center. So we've been here since July of 2005, and we're going to be celebrating our 10-year um, anniversary. Congratulations, this July. 10 years is a big milestone. And uh, it was funny how we got into this whole thing because I was introduced to Abe by a mutual friend. Okay. And, uh, and he's been famous for quite a while as a very accomplished chef. Exactly. So that made it that much easier to make the decision to go into business with him, having a critically acclaimed chef and a yes. beautiful location in Crystal Cove. Yeah, ocean view. I mean, you can't beat it in you a beautiful cannot. restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> so we started the partnership, and uh, next thing you know, we've been, we hit the ground running, and uh, we've been doing Fantastic. well ever since. Wonderful. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And um, thanks for letting us come in early today to kind of see the behind the scenes before the lunch rush comes. We really appreciate it. Well, you're very welcome. It's a pleasure having you. And I understand my next step is to go back to the kitchen with uh, Chef Abe or Abe-san uh, and learn how to prepare this extremely fresh fish that has just been uh, driven down from LA and before that flown in from Japan. Exactly. So you're going to witness him breaking down the fish okay. and prepping it for today's service. Fantastic. Can't wait. Join us in the kitchen. Chef Abe, Abe-san. Abe-san? <laughs> yeah. Okay, perfect. Abe-san, tell me a little bit about what this. I've never seen anything like this. And I do have gloves on, so I can actually help. You can get it. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, so this is not a spicy tuna hand roll. No. no. So what is this fish? That's what people say, like a coronet fish. A coronet fish? Yeah. Okay, because is there a crown, or it's just like you stab? What's a coronet? Oh, it's like a an crown. instrument. Yes. Like Got crown. it. Okay. Yeah. This is fantastic. Can you see this at home? long and so what what gets made oh sorry right. almost put oh, abe san in the face sashimi soup, sashimi soup, fish soup. soup okay yeah. can we see this yeah, fish yeah, yeah. okay look this is great it's not a flying fish but it looks like it it could fly it's beautiful where does this fish come from it looks so fresh i mean it looks it's like, like just japan. okay yeah almost like a japan yeah. from japan so this is all the way from japan it's beautiful what fish is this called it's a bluefin loving fish bluefin loving fish like love? No, no lo loving, like uh, loving food, like uh, loving food. Okay, check it out. Okay, so we have? Snapper, Thai snapper. A snapper? Mm -hmm. This isn't snap, okay. Open, no snapping from the snapper. Snap, yeah, the oh, on. Oh, <laughs> okay, look at this fish. All right, so how do we how do we take this apart? What happens next? It's well, beautiful. That one, it's hot. Scale, to scale it. First. Okay, that sounds messy. Are we gonna watch that? that? Yeah, sure. Okay. The fish. It's Which a, is this? Kampachi. Kampachi? It's a type of a yellow tail. It's all like kampai. Yeah, kampai. Kampai <laughs> fish? No, different. <laughs> kampachi? Yeah, kampai. Okay, it's a yellow tail. Yellow tail. So when I have my yellow tail sashimi here fresh, uh -huh. this is what I'm gonna be having. Yeah. Obviously prepared, not not like no, this. Not, okay, no, not served whole. Okay. Now that we've seen the selection of incredibly fresh fish at Bluefin, we're gonna scale the fish. And Abe-san's gonna show me how to do this expertly. He's already gotten started. This looks like a very sharp knife. So very sharp. Yeah, because the only kind of fish I've ever prepared are fish sticks. And I think it's different. They're, we don't, I don't scale those. Those just yeah. go right into the microwave. Yeah. So this is an obviously an art form. You can even hear it sounds almost like paper. Um, it's that thin of a cut um, being done here. It's very, wow, this is a delicate process. And it's beautiful. The way, I, I, my dad used to take me fishing and I hated it because it was boring and took forever. This is my kind of fishing where it gets delivered to you 
and then prepared, and then it gets made into sushi, sushi or sashimi. Look at this. That fish is beautiful. What kind of fish is this again? Yeah, kanpachi. Yeah, kanpachi, yeah. right? That one I thought was a kanpai fish, yeah. but different. You say kanpai when you drink and eat it. Yeah, different. So this is great. So, and do you do this to the entire fish? Yeah. Yeah. And how long does it usually take you to prepare all the fish in the morning? If you have to do this to all the fish? Well, I come arrive here about seven o'clock. Seven. Okay. So I wake up four o'clock and I go there. And then. Do you go to the fish market? Yeah, the Los Angeles. The so time. you have to go to Los Angeles to the yeah, fish market. Yeah, so yeah. Abe-san picks the fish himself, yeah. fresh from the fish market every morning at 4 a.m. Yeah. And then you come here at 7 and start seven, prepping? Prepping, uh, yeah, prepping stuff for 7 to okay. uh, other employee coming, maybe 9.30. Oh, wow. They were, they were okay, I didn't know. Day. I mean, I knew that a lot of um, work and um, artisanship went into making sushi. I didn't realize how early people uh, had to get up to serve me my sushi. Now I feel a little guilty. Yeah, and you yeah. don't have anyone else here helping you? No. You so, need to get some yeah. help. No. Abe-san wants to control the quality, I can tell, and the cuts of the fish, so and we respect that. Even though it makes him get little sleep, probably, and handle sharp knives as well. So this looks great. All right, so Abe-san. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends say when we want to go have food at Bluefin, we say we want to go out for sushi. But then we have fish that sometimes when we order it, we have to say, can I have this sashimi? Mm -hmm. So what is the difference? Sushi and sashimi? Yes. Sushi is... Uh, is it with rice always? Rice on the, yeah, That's on why the I like it, because I like yeah. to carbo load. So sushi has the rice involved with a roll or it's on top. Uh, and then sashimi, sashimi is uh, like a, just a sliced, uh, just the sliced, sliced fish, fish, which is probably what my trainer would rather I focus on. And perhaps we'll get to have some of that today. Are you going to serve me some? Show me how you make the sashimi and the sushi. Yeah. Exciting. As chef digs into this coronet fish, um, I'm excited to hear what's next for our segment today. What are we going to be doing next? Okay, next uh, I'm going to show you the sushi. How to make sushi? Gray, uh, Sashimi tray, carpaccio. Yeah, oh, fantastic. Thing. So we're going to learn how to cook sushi, fish carpaccio, and sashimi here at Bluefin. Coming up next. Yes. All right, so Ted and I are now at the bar, sushi bar at Bluefin, about to try some of Abe-san's delicious creations. But first, I have a couple of questions for you. So uh, it's Bluefin fine Japanese cuisine, fine Japanese dining. Does that mean anything different than what we're typically used to with Japanese food? Well, what we try to do here is use the finest ingredients that's uh, flown in from all over the world. And that's what distinguishes most of the, the fine dining aspect of it, in addition to the presentation yes, of the chefs. Which is famous. Uh, yes. I do have a couple questions before we start, because I eat at a lot of sushi bars, but I don't often know if I'm doing it right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, for example, when you have the chopsticks sure. and you break them apart, mm -hmm. I've seen people like really get go to town with the whittling kind of thing, almost it gets a little crazy. Yes. That's we, probably not. We try to discourage okay, that. Okay, so you just break them apart and that's yes. that. Yes, you, okay. you just go ahead and leave them until you're ready to eat them. All right, now, and then when they give me the wasabi, the fresh wasabi, which I saw they were actually grating from a wasabi root, so it's, it's the real deal mm -hmm. from Japan. Um, am I allowed to mix my wasabi with my soy sauce, or is that a dead giveaway that I'm American? Again, we would discourage that. <laughs> okay. um, okay. I think uh, most people tend to over-season their fish, okay. and uh, we would prefer that the fish, uh, you know, have the, its own flavor come out. So the uh, what I prefer is to have the chef season the uh, sushi for me yes. as it's presented. Okay. That way, I don't end up putting too much soy right. sauce or uh, over saucing it. It's like salting your food when it comes to the table before you taste it. It exactly. doesn't make any sense. Exactly. And I think my last question before we start, because I'm really hungry and I don't want to delay this any longer. Uh, is, you know, when when and if do you buy a beer or a shot of sake for your sushi chef? I've seen people do that a lot, yes. and I'm not sure if that seems, if they're handling sharp knives, I'm not sure if that's the best exactly. idea. Exactly. Uh, we find that sharp knives and uh, beers don't mix. <laughs> so okay, we would absolutely go. discourage that. Okay, good. Well, that's a good mantra. Sharp mm -hmm. knives plus beer equals don't mix. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, well, we're ready to go. Um, I'm excited to have some of um, Abe San's creations. Oh, oh my gosh. This looks fantastic. I'm sure you got a shot of this, but I don't have to tell you that I've never ever seen anything like edible whole beef on any of my sushi or sashimi before. Um, chef, uh, what are we having here? That's a monkfish liver pate. Monkfish it's liver pate. With caviar and this mustard miso vinegar. Oh my gosh, so not rich at all. So liver pate plus caviar equals amazing. All right, so I'm gonna go in here and take a 
a bite. And if he gave me the spoon, just so you know, he said it was okay to eat with a spoon and not with a chopstick. I just want everyone, I want that on the record. one of your favorites too, I would imagine. It is, it really is. And maybe the gold foil is like a little blingy and adds kind of like the Newport Beach touch, I'm and, thinking. And it is edible. A little blingy. It's fantastic. I'm going to take another bite while you guys enjoy my culinary experience. This is amazing. So monkfish liver, caviar, edible gold leaf, and a wonderful sauce with just enough flavor to really make it sing. It's beautiful. And as we always do on Dine Newport Beach, we have a wonderful pairing uh, with our delicious food. And we've got Jason Caldera here, who's the head mixologist and master of all things bar at Bluefin. Thanks for joining us, Jason. You're welcome, pleasure. You've got a sake pairing for me, which I've never enjoyed an actual sake pairing with sushi, so I'm excited to, to see what you have for us. Well, to pair nicely with the uh, on chemo and caviar, obviously I suggest a, uh, yeah. a Junmai sake, uh, the Junmai we have here is uh, from Soho Mare. That's the uh, producer. The uh, name of the sake is uh, Tokubetsu Kimoto. Wow, and, whatever uh, he said sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, Kimoto is like the uh, old tradition, like they uh, used to uh, mash the rice in the old traditional style. That's the uh, Kimoto style. Um, so this is a nice Junmai. It's got a nice uh, earthy umaminess to it that should pair really nicely with the uh, with the on chemo caviar. I don't have to shoot this right. No, no, no. Normally, okay, yeah, we, we sip sake here. We yeah, don't do the sake bombs. Yeah, sake was different. Yeah, it's yeah, different. It's yeah, different. No, okay, no so we're just going to take a sip. Okay, okay, good. That's amazing. It's so light. Mm -hmm. It has kind of like almost some citrusy notes to it, I feel yeah, like. Yeah. And it pairs beautifully with the monkfish liver, which you said in such a more eloquent, beautiful Japanese intonation. Um, and Ted, I know that a lot of your sake that you get, and I'm sure Jason can reinforce this, you get really rare sakes that you're not going to find anywhere else. Exactly. We're fortunate uh, to have a distributor that brings us very limited production sake. And uh, by limited, we're talking maybe 200 cases wow. uh, a year for that particular brewery. So um, even in Japan, it might be a very popular sake, and they might run out of the uh, allotment over there, but we'll still have we'll still some have it here. over here. I mean, I think this is really wonderful. I've never actually had the pleasure of sipping a sake, so I thank you for that. And uh, it's just, it really tastes like a fine wine. I mean, the, the, the pairing seems very similar as far as on the palate with wine to food. So I'll have another sip just to make sure it's the perfect pairing. Okay. Okay. Mm. This pairing is really, really amazing. I'm really enjoying sake, and I, I'm pleasantly surprised that I am. I didn't know I would. Um, <laughs> So Chef, Chef Abe, Abe-san, as we're, as we're calling you, what's next on the menu because I can't get enough of your food? Next one. Remember that this morning? Oh, I, I thought it was a flying fish. No, but, but it's, it's not. It's a loving fish. Okay. Sashimi, carpaccio. It's beautiful. All right, so, so Ted, thank you again mm -hmm. for having us here today. It's our pleasure. We love it. Um, while, you know, obviously you're in this amazing location with the Newport Beach. Sure. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about starting a restaurant in Newport Beach and why you thought it was a great place to, to do business. Well, I think we're fortunate enough to be in a location where we have this beautiful view right in front of us. And the community behind us uh, is a great fit for uh, Abisan's uh, cuisine. Uh, they appreciate the finer uh, ingredients that we're able to provide and the presentation and the uh, execution of our chefs. So it's been a great fit so far. Right, I agree. I think you know a lot. A lot of times Newport gets short shrift for not being as culinary, um, kind of minded or foodie focused. But I really think that a lot of us had known of Abe from his work at Matsuhisa in Los Angeles and enjoyed his restaurant um, in Newport Beach on the Peninsula originally. And now, of course, since 2005, I've been coming here to enjoy his cuisine. And again, it's, it seems very. Uh, it's a very elevated, very authentic, but it's got that kind of Newport Beach twist. Um, that we're all looking for when we're dining out. Chef Abe, what is next on the next, menu? I made for you a uh, love and fish uh, carpaccio. Okay, now I know that my incredible team uh, has gotten amazing shots of this, but this is perhaps the most beautiful dish I've ever been presented. Arigato, Abe-san. Uh, I don't even know, Ted, where to start because I feel bad. You can start at the end and uh, or anywhere. Do I, have to, I don't have to start with the fin. Well, you can. <laughs> because I saw, I saw in the kitchen, I saw 
this, this, this fish come in and he was really beautiful. I like him better now because he's about to be um, my meal. So I can just go Dig into in. the carpaccio. Sure. Sure. And is this like a little a touch of like a hot sauce or do we know? Yeah. Yes, like a sriracha almost, but better because it's abesan. It's a peppercorn, a pink peppercorn, which is beautiful. The, the, the balance, the flavor balance, it's so light, it's so delicate. The peppercorn just gives it a little kick. Uh, and it's so incredibly beautiful. It's really a work of art in the presentation. And I've never eaten anything like this before, and I, I feel like maybe I'm not gonna ever have a spicy tuna hand roll again. It scares me a little bit, because this is exactly how I wanna eat. Well, it doesn't get any fresher than this. You it saw doesn't. them break it down just literally uh, about half an hour yeah. ago. Yeah, I mean, then scales were flying. Exactly, now you're eating. And now, no scales are flying, and it's just all fits flying into my mouth. Mm. It's delectable. I love it, and as you said before, I never thought I wouldn't have a soy sauce available or some wasabi, but the dish speaks for itself, exactly. and it really doesn't need any seasoning. I mean, this is so exquisitely prepared. That's what exactly it. it. You really want to taste the fish for what it is without having any additional distractions. I don't think I've ever tasted fish like this before that yeah. where I've, I'm not you know, put off by a fishy flavor or something. It's just so fresh and delicious and so light. Um, what a treat. It's fantastic. So once again, sake pairing with Jason. Um, we're learning about another exclusive sake. This here is a Ginjo sake. It's probably, no it is. It's definitely our most uh, popular sake at the restaurant here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's for martini lovers. It's called Izumi Judan. It's a very crisp, dry sake. Oh it's got maybe a little bit higher alcohol content yeah. than uh, you're, you, know, you can probably taste that right, right now. 36% uh, proof or so. Um, it's really nice. Crisp, clean, very drinkable, delicious, delicious sake. Chef, what's next on the menu? Okay, this is uh, number one bluefin toro sushi. Number one? Bluefin toro. Bluefin toro. Toro toro. Toro toro. Just keep it Okay, can I ask you to, can I have it in one bite or do I have to? One bite. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure that's, because that's what I like to do. And there's wasabi on that, right? That's the best toro I've ever had. Is, is toro a kind of, what is toro? Kind of toro is uh, like a party tuna, okay. but especially like a bluefin. It's a, but bluefin? Yeah, 800 pound, 800 pound tuna. Yeah. It's a bluefin so small, berry. small fish. Small fish. <laughs> this. Is it different so, than maguro? Maguro is a tuna. Okay. So t family of, I mean a tuna and a bluefin, and the toro is a tuna berry side. Uh, That's a pink color. So it's like the, the pork and the pork belly. It has more flavor, more of the umami kind of yeah. taste. Yeah. Levi or something. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. So this is where I say kampai and arigato gozaimasu to the whole team at Bluefin. It's been a tremendous experience. To Ted Lee, the owner, who's been a gracious host and let us in today early before the lunch rush, which is fantastic to Jason, our wonderful mixologist and educator on sake, and of course to Chef Abe, Abe-san, for really the ultimate um, sushi and sashimi experience. It's truly fine Japanese dining at Bluefin, and I encourage you to come.